The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Who New Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. Hi everybody, it's Maria from What's the Story with Maria. How's it going? I want to welcome you to our show. I'm sorry we had a little bit of a slow start because we had a few technical difficulties on the radio end. So if you are listening to this is What's the Story with Maria, my name is Maria, and we usually go through Armed Radio, armeddigitalmedia.com, Armed Radio Global. So we are um, going live now on Facebook, and we are going to have, and the podcast will be ready after this, probably in a, about four or five hours. So you're still going to catch all of that stuff. We, uh, our regulars usually pop on within the first few minutes, so I like to chew up a little bit of that before I invite my guests on. Um, tonight is July 28th, Tuesday, July 28th, 2020, the year that was and wasn't. I don't even know what to say about 2020. So we want to welcome you. We, uh, as I said, we had a little bit of a late start, but don't let that worry you because we are going live on Facebook. And if you want to catch our show every Tuesday night, uh, it's on Armed Radio, ArmedDigitalMedia.com, ArmedRadioGlobal.com, and then we go right into podcasts. You can catch us on Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. First in tonight, first in the game, beating Leo Rorigas. Was number two. Leo, you know who beat you? Mandar Chick Magnet. That's right. Um, my boys, one after the other. I got some disco playing on arm. Yes, they're having some technical difficulties recording, but don't worry about it because it's going to go through. It'll probably pick up in a minute, and then it's going to go straight to the podcast, so don't worry about that. David Slauson, my sweetheart, how are you? Good to see you, honey. I am so curious to talk to you about how business has been down where you are, because I know you're in the real estate business and the world is upside down. But I think we're, everybody's just trying to do their thing. You know, one of the things that I've been so amazed about is how people are adjusting to things. It's just incredible. I don't know. It's incredible. I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday, and we were just saying how when we look back at this, we're going to think, one of two things. Number one, how did we get through that? That was the craziest time of our lives. And we just the other thing is we just adjusted to it. It's amazing how things just become every day, you know? And that's one of the things we're going to talk about on our show tonight. Um, but I do want to welcome people that have popped on. So let me see. We have Leo did pop on the, the uh, chick magnet. So good to see you. I know it's been a really, really, really hot day out there today. Like it was close to 100 in New York. So I can't even imagine what the weather was like down south. And if you folks are in Florida, in Texas, in Arizona, in uh, Louisiana, uh, in Kentucky, you must be roasting today. I don't know how everybody's doing it. We need a new song. Uh, You mean for me? Yes, I have. I do have two of them out there that float around, but I am working on a new one, Mandar. Thanks for pushing me a little bit, nudging me a little bit. Uh, Chris the Gavon is on. Where is he? Chris, I haven't seen Chris DePiro, but my brother from another mother, you know, I love me some Chris DePiro. He was on the show last week. I had so much fun because, you know, anybody that knows the show knows that normally. Hi, Kenny Holcomb. Kenny's in Tennessee. Uh, Kenny, I was just saying it must be so hot down there because it's so hot up here. So, it's so good to see you, Kenny. You know I love you to pieces. Um, Yes, Tennessee is roasting. I'm telling you, it's crazy uh, what's happening. So, um, what's going on across the country is that uh, it's just not what you're normally... This year has not been a regular year. It just hasn't. I was looking at my calendar and going back to some... uh, Thinking about the last show, I believe, that we had actual people in in the studio was um, 
Christy Cates and um, Marty Thomas came on together. And that was the last show that we actually had people. Usually I, I have two people in the audience with me and I cook for them and we have a great time. And then we had to go remotely where people were calling in. So and then last week my buddy Chris DePiro joined me in the studio because it was my three year anniversary of the show or I should say our three year anniversary all of us because we've been doing this together and uh, Chris was in the audience with me or this in the studio with me we had our masks on it was the beginning of baseball season and Chris I'm dying to talk to you about baseball season because apparently there's a lot of like ifs up in the air I should say balls in the air but uh, um, there's a lot of if it's going to continue to go through all that stuff and um, also, uh, shout out to Anthony Fauci, Dr. Anthony Fauci, who threw out the first pitch. He threw out the first pitch at the Nationals game. And from what I hear, he threw a strike. Like literally, landed right in the pocket. Um, so that is very exciting. Um, rumor had it that apparently um, 45 was supposed to throw it, um, the first pitch in Yankee Stadium in August, but that is a rumor. So that was really never um, happening. Uh, so I don't know if somebody, somebody got their wires crossed. So that is not going to be happening. And um, baseball is happening, but it's kind of happening and not happening. I don't know. I can't figure out. All I know is that my uh, at-bat app, which goes on my phone, already charged. They charged me for the full season. Thank you very much. But whatever. I'm not going to complain about it. All right. Mando said, so I knew about Memphis and Elvis. I didn't know about the walls in Tennessee. So, you know... I've got to tell you, Mandar is one of these people whose brain works like that. Um, and I don't think... Okay, so we're talking about mask mandates, right? Mask mandates in Tennessee, I don't think so, right, Kenny? Type that in. I, I don't believe there is a mask mandate in Tennessee. There should be, but I don't believe there is. Let me see. I have six schedule. Anyone needs one. 600 royal schedules. If and Yes, of course, they're, they're no good. Yes, I know. Because um, you're in Kansas City, I'm, I'm assuming, David, right? There's a nobody has nothing. Nobody knows anything this year. We're just flying by the seat of our pants. That's it. If there's any time to just say, oh, who's calling in? My friend John Walter. All right, here we go. John, hold on, honey. I'm gonna put you on speakerphone. Okay. I'm can, good. Yeah, hi, honey. Can you hear me? All right, I'm going to put you up to, I have two microphones. One goes into the radio station. One goes into okay. Facebook. Everybody, this is my great friend, John Walter. And we have been right. friends. John, when did you start uh, working at Tony and Tina's? 92? Well, we built, like, well, we did vaudeville together, right? Yeah, well, we were the t top banana and second banana, right. <laughs> no, I think it was like 93, 92. You were there before me, right? Yeah, I was there in... Uh, August of 91. Right. So I think I got there at like 92 or 93. Yeah. So and then me, I did like a, yeah, a four-year run from there. Let me just uh, fill everybody in. So I was, uh, I and Chris Piero, Susie Campanero, uh, a ton of us were in this show called Tony and Tina's Wedding, which was an amazing improv, funny show. And I also worked with this brilliant, beautiful actress named Jody Walter. I mean... Well, her name wasn't Walter then, was it? <laughs> no, not, not, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not so yet. <laughs> Jody, my, and we worked side by side, and she was my buddy. And then this really cute guy, um, John Walter, came into the show, and he was super funny, and he worked with us, and we just had a great time. And then, like, one day, John just kind of confessed to me that he had a crush on Jody. And I, I, knew, I knew I had to go to you. Yes. And, uh, boy, <laughs> do I, am, am I glad that you did. Because I thought that is a great match. And you guys started dating pretty pretty quickly after you joined the show, right? Yeah, it was um, actually, we really, we kind of got together. At, you remember Lee Mazzilli came to oh. the show? Yes, everybody, the, the Lee Mazzilli from right, the Mets the and party, the Yankees. Right. Yes. And that's when, you know, on the outside, you know, we, we just kind of like connected more than we actually did in the show, like on a personal level, right? kind of like you know things like that sometimes you get outside the show it opens up the gate a little more you know yeah absolutely yeah Lee Mazzilli thank you for reminding me yeah I know I should let him know he was a know. great guy by the way he was a very sweet man 
And he yeah. was retired from baseball temporarily because then after that he joined the Yankees. But he was with the Mets for years. And then he wanted to try his uh, his his luck at acting, and he joined the cast. And he played Tony. And uh, he was a really sweet guy. He used to take us all out afterwards. He was just a really nice man. And um, but it did. The show became this uh, crazy kind of place because people were just packing it. They were packing it. Remember, John, how crazy it was? Yeah, Audience it was. members. Yeah. It was organized chaos. <laughs> right. Exactly. So you and organized. I have known each other a long time. You're a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful actor. And oh, thank you. I, I love your acting, but I also want to remind you that you wrote a screenplay many years ago that I still to this day cannot get out of my head. It was one of yeah, the, you know, you read it. I think you and uh, not not many people in the cast read it. I think I gave one to you and uh, Tony Patelis, right? Yeah, maybe. Um, and Jody. Wow. And Jody. Wow, yeah. Yeah. Even, and yeah, of course. And, uh, and it was so um, brilliant. I haven't read that in a while. I'm telling you, so hold on to that. Happy. You know, it's never too late to resurrect these things. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a tumbless soul. Yeah, um, I don't know. I can still work today. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I mean, for actors, forget about it. And I just remember, like, thinking that you. this is what I'm leading into something. You're The way that you think comically is very uh, unique in that you think in literal, literals and figuratives. Mm. And I have yeah. always appreciated that. Just like I, I love puns like you love puns. Yeah, so uh, we used to do that all through the show. We just do these puns, and Jody would jump in there, and I always really appreciated that about your sense of humor. You know, you were a literal figure to Oh, that. thanks. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. So now, yeah, and, uh, I also like the the uh, the, the malapropism. The malapropism, yeah. right? It's so funny because no, I call my girlfriend uh, Miss Malaprop because she always yeah. does it. She'll mix things together, but. <laughs> That is going to lead me to your art. Now, let's hold on to your art for a minute. Uh, okay. Let's talk about your acting first. Now, as we're doing this, I want to bring up John's picture. This is my friend, John Walter. I'm going to hold this picture up. Some of you may know John. He's an amazing actor, and he is very intense. He has a very intense look, but he's the sweetest thing on the planet, and he's super funny. But these pictures, this is just a really intense one, I think, John. And then I have, let me see, I have another one of you, and I think you're shooting a movie in this one because you have a gun in your hands. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. What you was know, this? What was happening called, here? Uh, that, that movie was pretty, um, pretty uh, prescient. I mean, actually, it would be more prescient. It was really about... <laughs> Hold on, honey. I'm losing you a little bit. Say that again. The movie was what? Yeah. Well, the movie was called Gas Mask. Okay. And it was really, it was about like this apocalyptic movie, um, like a pandemic, of, like this virus wow. was going around. Yeah. So it was pretty... Uh, How long ago was that? Oh, well, we shot that, I mean, four years ago, four or five wow. years ago. Yeah. And that's before anybody would have ever thought about a pandemic. Yeah, and it's it, crazy. It is yeah, crazy. Yeah, like I played this guy where we're holed up in this cabin upstate we're just hiding from society this guy comes on the property wearing a gas mask because we're far away from the virus where we don't have to wear gas masks and we just kind of survive so and crazy. i just remember thinking you know when we were shooting that movie just you know the reality of that like could this ever really happen you know i mean it's not as bad as you know thank god it's not that bad as, you know it wasn't the movie but you know it's still it's intense enough. talk about a foreshadowing right yeah Wow. Exactly. So, oh, no. <laughs> but you you tend to do more film than stage. Is that correct? I would say yeah. That I'm more I'm more I think, yeah. Film film is some, something that's always appealed to me more. You know, cinema than theater. Uh, you know, I started in theater. You know, you know when I did when I came back to New York, I did like maybe a play a year. But I've always been drawn to film. You know, yeah. that, that medium. It's a whole different kind of thing. But. Yeah, I love it too. I love it a lot. And you have a really great face and physique for film as well. Like it really, it captures the, your nuances, you know, uh, and the, and your intensity, you know. And you have beautiful eyes, so it really it really picks them up. Uh, but you're yeah, also, so, so, yeah, I had a, oh, yeah, not too really that 
intensity, I think. Yeah. I, I mean, just beautiful. So now you've been, I, I was looking at your website. So you, you worked on a few films in the last couple of years, right? A lot of indie films? Yeah, a lot of indie, like, short films. Um, and I, you know, I, I started kind of, you know, focusing more on my art at, you know, Hold on, honey. I lost you a little bit. Are you still there? Oh, okay. Let, let's call John back. Hold on a second. Sometimes this happens. It's just one of those days, right? Okay. I'm going to call John back because I really want to talk about his art so much. It's so incredible. Hold on a second. I agree. Hi, babe. I don't uh, know if that was you or me. I don't I'm know, honey. Sure. The call drops. But, okay, so tell us about the art, because what I'm going to do, you t talk about it a little bit, and then I'm going to show, I I was able to just print out, like, very small, but I can hold them up to the camera, um, print out some of them that I particularly are my favorite. But talk about your art, and this will go into what, um, what you were talking about. I was talking about with your sense of humor and your... Your liter the way you look at the world in puns. So go ahead, honey. Well, yeah, I, I, I've been painting, you know, I came to painting late in life. You know, it was kind of like an epiphany. I woke up one morning because I had never had any inclinations towards, like, to arts when I was growing up. So it was kind of like a surprise to me and everyone else. Wow. So I woke up one day about 12 years ago. I don't know if I had a dream. I just had this feeling. And I, I actually turned to Jody and I said, I want to start painting. And she looked at me and she said, do you want to start in the kitchen or the bathroom? Because, you know, she thought I meant, you know, painting. Oh, my God. Okay, she so said, everybody, no, like let I'm me just fill you in. Jody, that beautiful girl that was in our show, John and Jody got together They, and they got they ma they got married. They've been How many years have you been married now? We've been married like 22 years. 22 years, wow. And they're beautiful and they have a beautiful son and I love them both so much. And so Jody thought you meant the, the, like painting literally like the kitchen. Right, because it was completely out of left field, because I'd never attempted to do anything like that. And I said, no, like painting on canvas, you know, painting. She said, oh, yeah, okay, go for it. Okay. So I just started, you know, I went to the, you know, went to the art supply store and kind of filled the basket with color paint and brushes, and I just started painting, went crazy, like painting like large scale, like color, kind of expressionism type okay. of stuff. And I felt like right away that I there was something going on and everyone else felt that but for a long time I was painting like that I felt like I was forcing it all right you know, I just wasn't connecting um it, it, visually I, I think it looked good but I don't think it was connecting okay and one day um, and what do you mean by that to explain that to our, our listeners what yeah. do you mean by it wasn't connecting well I think it like in any kind of art like let's take writing I once heard a, a saying about writing and it said no tears for the writer no tears for the reader like, if you're not feeling it, they're not going to feel it. Right. Um, even though something can be visually, you know, visually look good, um, and people may like it, but, you, you, you know, I, I wanted to feel it in a different way. It was, it was a little more, it was like uh, intellectual, right, I think, than, right. than I was. Because I was just kind of feeling out painting and, like, developing my technique. And so I did that for about two or three years, and then... One day I went to the art supply store and I just got very overwhelmed by color and the choices. And I felt like it was like oppressive to me, like all these color choices, because I was painting with a lot of color. Right. And I just had this thing, idea of like, you know, this, uh, just do black and white. <laughs> just keep it simple. Right. Um, so I started painting a much smaller scale and I start integrating like words and my, my humor into the pieces, into the images. So yeah. I, I work with like words and images together because, you know, words are images, images are words. I like the combination of the two. Yeah. And it just really fit. I knew there was a connection. I just felt like, you know, that, you know, this is who I, you know, this is how I, I need to work. And I've been doing that for the last, you know, six years, just painting like that. Well, I got to tell you, John, when I, I didn't know about your artwork and your lovely, beautiful wife, White Door, actually kind of sent me something. She was like, hey, um, I don't know what it was, like some link. And I, yeah. as soon as I looked at it, I was like, that is so John. Like, <laughs> yeah. it was, yeah. it completely represented you in the best way. Like, it, it was so funny, and yet it was, it was simple. But it was so smart. Right. It was so smart. Like, 
it was thinking outside the box. The black and white was like the simple part of it, right? Right, yes. And yet, you, like you said, because you put words and and then some of it is very sweet. And I'll, I'll show you, like, I'm going to pop some of it. I couldn't, I ran out Are of printing. Are you on my website in. right now? Are you showing my website? Well, they're gonna, they, they already popped it on. So Leo popped it okay. on. So okay. if people will go and take a look at that after the show. And um, But these are some of my, well, first of all, this is the one that I bought. I'll show you. And what it says is, I know it's hard to, this is a black and white. It says, I miss you even when I'm with you. And I just, I mean, did this one to me was the sweetest really thing on the planet. It, because it's so beautiful and simple and sweet. And I actually, John, I got to tell you, it very much inspired me. I have it above my piano. And when I first bought oh, it. Oh, that makes my day. Thank no, you. when I first bought it, I Jody said to me, take a picture of it. Okay, so my, yeah, my friend Leo has posted your web, your website. When I first bought it, okay. Jody said, make sure you take a picture of it. And I did. I put it above the piano. But the pe when I put your artwork, my piano looks awful all of a sudden because my piano was this old, beat-up <laughs> piano. And do you know that it inspired me to, to redo my piano? I, I sanded it down, and I whitewashed it and put all this beautiful varnish. And so that it matches, it kind of matches the painting. So then I took another picture and sent it to Jody. So she'll show it to you. But your picture inspired me to, to redo my piano. Oh, that's great. That's what art should do, right? Yeah. Kind of like, yeah. And oh, then that, that's great, I bought the same one for my girlfriend and gave it to her. And she um, loved it so much. And she put it next to a picture of her dad, who she lost when she was a kid. So for her, the painting meant something very different. Then you know, like it was this beautiful. Uh, yeah, you know. Oh, and, you know, it's interesting how you say that because I think as literal as these pieces are, you can read them in so many different ways, and people read that that piece in different ways. Yes, um, absolutely. Uh, but I want to show a few more. So this is where your like cool. your cleverness comes in. So there's this one that I mean, some of them are so silly and funny. So then there's this one that's like ice cream, right? So it's like this block of ice. <laughs> that's screaming. It's just like hysterical. So it's like, kind of spooky. It's spooky and funny. Like this. Yeah, I mean everybody has their different. And then this one I love. It's a girl driving, and it's and it's like a sign. I love both of these. One says, uh, "Right," at like it points to the right at wit's end, which to me is hysterical. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about those pieces. I want to do more like that because I like signs. I'm very ins inspired by signs, you know, on the road or on an urban you know, street. Yes. Um, because they, they, the thing I like about signs is that they try hard just to give us the information without, without being artistic. And I find in that, you know, art. Absolutely. You know, um, especially when you read a roadside at night when you're alone in the car and you, you're, you have that vulnerability. Yeah. You, know, you see a sign glowing at night, it tells you what to do in the arrows. You know, should you take the exit? You know, so oh, I, 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 I love like that. It's almost kind of got like a, like a Hitchcockian feel or David Lynch feel. Yes. It. So it, this, yeah. the, the other one that you have of this series is, I'm going to actually order it soon. I, 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 it, it says, um, left to my own devices. Wow. Yeah. And, and it's yeah. got pointing left. And that is like a, a saying that I've heard before having to do with addiction that I love if I'm left to my own devices uh, yeah. yeah and I think yeah and I think the interesting thing about that saying is, you know it's an older saying but I think it's more profound today because we are literally left to our own devices and if you know in a literal sense yes so absolutely it's, it's interesting how that word evolved yeah um, and I just know. find it like and it's also there's something very like you're right Hitchcockian about that the woman driving, it's very dark out, and there's that sign. I, I just am crazy about this series. And then there's this really funny, and my friend Dominic Pupa, who comes on and watches the show every week, he's a comedian. Yeah. He's also a huge Cher fan, and he's yeah. going to love this one. So this one says, you can, it cut off because when I printed it, it cut off, but it says, tomorrow's weather, sunny and Cher. I mean, come yeah. On, and it's hysterical. Now, these what size are these, John? Would you say the one that I ordered? What size? Well, yeah, I, I, you know, the size. I, I, 
I actually go with one size. Is are 11 by 14. Okay. 11 inches by 14 inches because um, I, I, I used to go smaller and I used to go a little bigger and I kind of found the Goldilocks size. It's a, it's a perfect little size. You yeah. Know? It's not too little and it's not too too big. Yeah, I just am crazy so I think they really about it. Work, yeah. I'm crazy about your stuff. And I just, uh, it's because like you said, it has so many different layers and it's going to speak to different people in different ways. So I, I, I urge everybody to check out John's website. It's John, it's, we printed it up here. I mean, we posted it here. John Walter, uh, so J-O-H-N-W-A-L-T-E-R dot N-Y-C. That is his website. You can see uh, all kinds of things that he does, but then you just click on black and white art, I believe. Right, yeah, and there's there's, there's some different categories. You know, I have some uh, my acting videos on there, and, you know, some of the other stuff, and some of the things that I've written. I'm going to actually post more of my writing, you know, things that I've written. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to put a little more, you know, put more stuff up, you know, in the near future. I, I just am crazy about it. So you know what, and and you know what I love I love about it also is that to me you're one of those people that kind of like you don't you're not just good at one thing you have a lot of different outlets you're like a true true artist to me oh thank you no, it's, so nice. no no it's i'm being honest it's i mean it may feel nice but it's the truth you know you you're an, a wonderful actor but it's the way your mind works you're highly intelligent and yet you're not condescending you're just one of these great guys and again i i urge you to look at your screenplay again that you wrote that i'm just a huge fan of I feel like one of these days that screenplay is going to get made. Yeah, it's um, yeah, I, like I, I think that story in some ways would work more now than you know than when we wrote it. Yeah. Um, you remember the title? How much is happy? How much is happy? I mean, the How title is, is brilliant in itself. I mean, you could even make a painting of that, John. You should think about. Yeah, I mean, every you know, it's 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 funny because like my my work, my all my paintings really always start with the words you know the phrases yeah. that could be something i hear on the street a quick phrase you know a sign whatever um and it just opens <coughs> it opens up possibilities because you know words i think words inspire me more than images yeah well, you are because you're a writer that's the thing you're a writer and you're an actor so words are your they're your thing, tools yeah, yeah. and Language. so yeah then you have this other part of your brain that's why i think you're so brilliant you have this other part of your brain that goes off and does something else, but you're still carrying the soul of who you are. So it's just really amazing. Strange, though, if I'll throw you these things, because, like I said, if you had told me, you know, 20 years ago or even 15 years ago that I'd be, like, painting, I would have thought it would be, like, work, like you're crazy. Yeah, but it's, so that's not the way know, you know? art works. That's not the way creative people work. You don't tell us we're going to do something. You just, <laughs> right. it, we're, exactly. we channel, because I truly feel that we channel what we do, mm -hmm. you know, as artists. Yeah, there's always something else at play, isn't there? You yeah, know? absolutely. When, when you, you know, whenever you create something, I'm sure, because, you know, I know you sing and you act, it, but there's always that part of something that you don't you don't even know who did that. I think uh, there was that uh, director, Vin Renders. Yeah. And he had said that whenever I watch one of my movies, I'll always say, like, who did that? You know, I'll see certain aspects of it. Wow. And it's not even like it was like a subconscious thing. I think even when we, when I make this, you know, we make these pieces, people see things in it that I wasn't even aware of, even about myself. Or so I think that's the kind of the collective consciousness about art. We're all kind of connected to it. And that's the beauty of it. Yeah. We all we all have a piece of it, you know. Wow, I just love it, honey. I just love it. So listen, I I I'm gonna we have posted your stuff. I want to tell everybody. Uh, to go and please look at John's stuff. It's incredibly affordable. It's just like, I mean, I love it. I'm going to get some more pieces. But I just want to thank you for calling in, John. Uh -oh. And when all this crazy stuff subsides, I'll have you and Jody come on and actually be in the studio live I would together. Because that. I, I would that's love the that. way I like to do it, and I cook for everybody, and it's just really great. But and we, congratulations to you too. I mean, you're just moving on, and I love this thing you're doing. You know, it's the story with Maria. I think it's a great idea because you have this. A great personality oh, for it, and, and um, you have so a lot much. to say. I really appreciate it. You know, it yeah. means a lot to me, and I'm, I'm really honored to be on your show. Well, Every I love you, me. honey. You'll be a friend for life, as you have been so far. So, uh, give Jody a big hug, and I will, I will do. And now this is going to go into podcast on Spotify, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. You just type in "What's the Story with Brienne," and in about six hours, 
the show will be on. You'll be able to listen oh, to it. Okay? No, I will play it later. And um, hey, thanks again. You're welcome. And uh, I will see you soon, somehow, some way. Okay, honey. Keep doing what Bye. you're doing. You're so talented. I love you. I, lo I love you, too. Bye-bye. Bye, honey. Thanks again. Bye. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Wow. Oh, I love John so much. You know, you know what? I, I mean, Ed's going to call in any second. You know when you work with people and you just know that they're special? And I don't mean that they're just because they're talented. They're just special human beings. They're very kind and they don't rattle cages. Uh, they do in funny ways, but not like they're... He was just always one of those really solid, kind, and thoughtful human beings. And he, when he had this crush on this other friend of mine, and I thought, yes. You know when you meet two great people and you're like, together, they're going to be unstoppable. And that's the way it was. So hopefully when all of this is over, we will have them in the studio. And Jody's a great actress as well. She's really talented. Okay, here's my friend Ed Sylvia. Ed, hold on, honey. I'm going to put you on speakerphone. Can you hear me, my love? I can hear you perfectly. Okay, wonderful. First of all, Thank you for calling in, sweetheart, and um, I'm so excited because I had my friend John Walter call in, and he's, uh, I'm, tonight I went with a, like a visual art thing. I usually have some kind of a theme, and tonight I wanted to go with, um, although John's an actor, and uh, he's a painter, and you, to me, when I first met you, you I met you as a singer, right? Right. And you're mm -hmm. a great yeah. singer. You're a great singer. Huh. And you're you. like this happy, happy guy, and your happiness comes through in your voice. And I love uh, that above you. Uh, that's a lovely compliment. Thank you. I learned so much from you guys at the Beat Fest. I swear to God, it was like a master class in, in how to perform. Coming in, well, with Michael Isaacs, right? Uh, uh, well, yeah, Michael Isaacs was, I mean, I, I'm coming to the Beat Fest before I met him. I met him at the Beat Fest. Right. When he was playing. And then I worked with him at, at uh, Pegasus Uptown for a couple of years. Yes, and um, Brandy's? Did you ever go into Brandy's? All the time. I lived in that neighborhood when I first lived in New York. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, all of those places. And Rose's Turn. Uh, I did some cabaret there at one point in the 90s. I, I, yeah, I was, I was making the circuit of all the piano buzz for one time. Yeah, but you also did a, a, a one-man show at the duplex upstairs that I remember distinctly and I loved it. It was so good. I I I didn't do a one man show. No. I did costumes for a Well no wait, I'll tell didn't you sing in Spanish? Mm, I might have sung in somebody else's okay, show. Okay, so maybe that's I, what it was. You then you sung in someone else's show, but I remember thinking because I knew you was a singer that came into the piano bar and just this lovely like you had always like would burst in and had this great energy. You would sing. Everybody loved you, and um, and then I heard you. Maybe it wasn't. A, it might have been a variety show, and you were just great. You were great. So I wanted to talk about the singing. That's how I always knew you, and then just recently I started realizing that you're also a designer. Is that right? That is right. Yep. Okay. So tell. Bring up your voice a tiny bit, honey, only because it it's on this phone. I have to get into the microphone. Okay. I yeah, that that's much okay. better, much better. So tell okay. everybody, uh, were, were you a designer? Tell, tell us about the designing part of your life. Well, I mean, I started out my life uh, really studying music and theater. Okay. And uh, so I always sang, and I did a, played a lot of instrumental. I did a lot of choirs. I did all of that crap growing up. I did a lot of musical theater. Um, and uh, a lot of classical singing as well. Okay. Um, oh, cl all right. When I, young, when I was younger, I really wanted, I wanted, like, Richard Kiley in Medieval Mancha was my hero. Like, he was who I wanted to be when I grew up as a singer. Wow. Um, you know, like, it, it, the, the pace of the expression, the control, the humanity, the sound, everything. He was perfect for me. Um, and that's still a part that I want to play. Um, well, okay. you could be you got you got the beard for it now, honey. You're all set. I, I love I, your beard, totally, by the way. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. And you know what? In so many shows I've been in, I've had to wear a handlebar mustache, and now I have one for real. It's sort of like it was like foreshadowing. Okay, yeah. look. Hold on a second. I have a picture of you. 
I'm going to hold it up. This is my friend Ed Sylvia. And look how handsome he is with that beard. Oh my God, I love it on you, Ed. No, thank you so much. It's gorgeous. Well, I, I kind of like it. I'm yeah, happy. it I, suits I, I, you. I dig it. Yeah, I, I sort of feel like well, there's always some part of me that's a little bit on the Victorian side, or should we say Edwardian side? Maybe. Yes, um, absolutely. So it's it, you know. Uh, I was I was on a Zoom meeting recently with grad school friends, and I was wearing the striped tank top with the mustache and the beard, and my girlfriend came and was like, Ed, you look like a, like a, you're in a Victorian bathing suit hat. Oh my um, God, absolutely. So how did how did the whole? Now I know you were also a um, creative director. Um, uh, wait, you've done costumes, right? Well, yeah. That, I mean, like by the time I was in high school, I was designing. I, you know, I grew up with a grandmother who was a seamstress. And uh, an aunt who's a sister. Wow. And so it's for cheese. Like, they, their hands were always busy making something. Yep. Right? Same so, thing with my family. Uh, right. Exactly. Yeah. I grew up in, you know, an hour south of here. So, um, it, it's, uh, yeah, it was, I, as soon as I was able to start selling and, and thinking in those terms, I was selling. And my aunt was, you know, my aunt was sort of my, my mentor. And she helped me through my first couple of projects, and then I was off on my own doing stuff and doing costumes for shows at school, mm -hmm. and you know, prom gowns and pageant gowns and wedding gowns. I did a wedding gown for my first brother's first uh, wedding, which was when I was a senior in high school. Wow. You know, um, yeah, I was crazy. And uh, by the time I went, you know, I would go to the theater conference every year and and study how they did their portfolios. So I had one when I went to apply to college. Okay. And uh, I applied, uh, you know, I went to Brandeis University, which had a great theater arts program, but an excellent graduate theater arts program. And I ended up staying there through undergrad and graduate school and getting two degrees, one a bachelor's in theater and then a, a master's uh, in technical design for theater. And, and so that, that's what I came to New York to do. Wow. Well, okay, so, and you also, didn't you design the windows at Bloomingdale's? Uh, I was never the window designer. I did design some of the windows, but I was the supervisor of window display. I was the, the, the second in command under the director. Okay, well, that's a big deal, too, Ed, and I want to just tell people about that. Now, I want to, so now, because of the, who would have thought you'd be designing masks? Right. But now, tell us. I'm going to hold up some... This is why I'm attracted to uh, Ed's masks. They're not your average... I could only print a few, but these are some of the designs that he does. I'm just going to hold these up. That's just like one of them. I mean, there are so many of them. There's literally like hundreds of... I mean, a hundred of them at least. And so then there... Look at this. Look at these different patterns that you can choose from. They're just... I could only print out a few... So I'm just going to hold these up, Ed, and then I want... So, I mean, there's so many to choose from. So now, this is the inside of the mask, which I love. So this says it's got your actual label in it. And this is not your average mask. This is like, it's got the three layers, right? Yeah, three, now, yeah, now, three layers. But these are not just... These are designer masks, right? <coughs> so now tell me what inspired you to do designer masks. Um, I started, you know, for like, uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic, right after lockdown, you know, I had my, my sort of two weeks of numbness watching Netflix and, and, and bemoaning the state of the world, and then I realized, okay, I'm going to need to get, make myself some nap. So, my girlfriend, who does what I do, and I were talking on the phone, and we shared patterns and things that we found online. And I have a long face. I have a big head and a long face and uh, a beard, right? So the normal mask patterns weren't fitting me well. I found one pattern that fit the best, and I altered it to fit more comfortable and look better on me. And that became the basis of my pleated pattern. Okay. Which is, which is the one that I promote the most because it, it fits the most people, um, it has the most movement, and it, it's... Um, the way I like I, I sort of look at the fleece like uh, like siding on a house, like clapboard siding, you know, like horizontal siding, like layered over each other. Yeah. So these fleece layer over each other, and they offer a little bit more protection because of the fleece. 
Um, but also, because the police went all the way across the map, uh, they kind of hold it out from your nose and your mouth. And there's a, a little dot. It, 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 it nips in at the nose, right over the nose and right under the chin. So it hugs under your chin. It hugs over your nose. There's a wire in it. But they're it all... Creates, so that's the practical creates, part, but they're gorgeous. So this is the kind of thing you would wear... Like you could actually wear to work, you could wear. So they, uh, my friend Leo has posted your website. So EdwardSylvia dot com. That is no, E uh, E D Sylvia N Y N Y. Okay, sorry, honey. Thank you. E D W A R D S Y L V I A N Y dot com. Please go and check it out. It's going to blow your mind how beautiful these designs are. And uh, people can just pick a design and then order the mask and the size, right? Yeah. Um, it, it's, uh, I've got two different styles of masks. One's a sleeve yeah. one's a knockoff. Um, and then there's four different sizes in each style and over 100 fabrics. Uh, to choose from. Yeah. And you you can also choose an option to have customization. My business is based on a bespoke kind of model, so it's custom made to order. Okay. And if you choose a customization in your map, you know, when you're ordering your map, if you choose to add a customization, it sends me a direct message. Okay. And I will contact you, and we will discuss what you want. Is that amazing no, or what? Now, look, we're going to be, whether this, hopefully things will get behind us soon if we all do the right thing, but... The right thing is wearing a mask. So, which means as yeah. we get back to our lives, which we are, we are, a lot of us are getting back to our lives, we still have to wear these masks. So, you might as well look great doing it. You know, that's what I think. And you might as well feel attractive doing it. I know it sounds silly, but I see, I mean, when I was looking on your website, I'm like, I wouldn't mind wearing that at all. And now you, uh, like me, are, you're from Massachusetts, right? Yep, I'm from Middleborough. Middleborough. Right so there are some, I heard a rumor that there are a few Red Sox masks out there. Uh, I have to, I, you know, I, at some point I started buying up, like, small uh, embroidered emblems and stuff on Etsy. Yeah. Uh, just, just to offer some whimsy and some different options. We have a lot of Boston listeners, you know. A lot yes. of Boston listeners. Yep. So, so, you know, I, I got some Boston Red Sox emblems, and I've made a couple. Yep. Um... You know, I won't tell the Boston Red Sox folks, I've also got Yankees and look, because, um, you know, I live in New York. So right, well, no, I think, listen, it's a big world. Every There's room for all of us. But I just, yeah. because uh, we do have a lot of listeners from Boston, that there's some really cool Red Sox designs out there. Yeah, yeah, there are. And, you know, I try to, like, uh, like the, the masks are, they're perfunctory and they're a little bit foreign looking on your face, right? So I sort of went in the direction of things that were beautiful and colorful and and graphic and yes. whimsical. Like I wanted things that were fun. I have some very demure and very plain choices as well. Yeah, but, you do. Uh, These I just picked out some fun ones. But there's some really pretty ones. Really pretty ones. And yeah, I, I just wanted something that would suit everybody's taste. Yeah. And I I'm also, you know, like my whole like the business that I've been building aside from the mask before the pandemic was all based on customers made to order stuff. Right. So I really like the part of it where I get to be involved with the people and and uh, try and figure out what it is that they're seeing in their head and how I can make it happen. Wonderful. You know? All right. Well, sweetheart, I'm so happy that you were able to call in and uh, I will at some point would love to have you actually come to the studio and we can where you can show everybody everything and they can see your beautiful face. We just are still trying to socially distance, so thank you for your I patience understand. with that. So everybody, please go and check out uh, edwardsylviany.com. We have posted it to our page, and we're going to share, uh, I'm going to share this on a bunch of different pages. So Ed, thank you for calling in. I love you to pieces, and I appreciate you and, and how you see the world in such a beautiful way. Thank you, Maria. It was such a pleasure to be here. I'm really, like, this is really big for me. I, I love you. I love you too, honey. And I'll talk to you soon, okay? Okay. Thank All you right. Bye, sweetheart. Bye-bye. Oh, nice, nice, nice man. Very talented. Bright light. Makes beautiful things. So, please, go and check Ed out. Now, and look at 
we're going to be wearing masks for a while, okay? Whether we're healthy or not. Let's stay healthy, and we can stay healthy and look beautiful, look handsome, look upscale. And especially people that, like some of the stuff that he makes, I can see like people wearing them with suits and, and looking really great. Okay, now we have reached a part of our show called, Go ahead, keep eating. You know, that's the food section of our show. So, uh, and our regulars love this part, and I will not disappoint you. Okay, what have I made here? I'm still trying to be healthy because I'm still trying to fit into my clothes, but I'm doing better. Just so you guys know, I lost 10 pounds. All right, so this is flounder, and it's snuggled in um, shallots, red peppers, and Brussels sprouts. What did I marinate the um, flounder in? I marinated in white wine, lemon, garlic, butter, thyme, and dill. So those were the spices I used. I had a little yesterday because I made a ton of it. It's so good. I can't wait to eat this. And so that is our summer because, you know, we're trying to eat light, right? And my summer salad. I love a good salad, as you folks know. My summer salad is, I had Boston lettuce because of Ed. Ed, because of you, I chose the Boston lettuce. And so Boston lettuce, which I love, it's also called butter lettuce sometimes, and uh, Persian cucumbers, Bermuda onion. This is uh, pomodori tre colore. They're beautiful. That means tricolored tomatoes. And they're so, in the summertime, tomatoes are just exquisite. And I put oregano on that. In the summer, my mother always would put oregano on salads. And I just remember, like, it's just a sense memory for me for summer. So oregano, and I am going to put uh, aceto di modina, which is a beautiful balsamic vinegar. It's a little bit sweet. And I'm going to put a um, gramola, Milanese gramola oil for that salad. I can't wait. Now, what are we having for dessert? I'm still being good with the desserts. I know, Mandar, you want me to eat cake soon, and I will. But these are delicious summer nectarines. Could you die? I love nectarines. So I'm going to be having nectarines tonight, okay? I'm still staying healthy. Pretty soon I'll go crazy. So that is what is uh, on the uh, What's the Story with Maria section of our show. Let me check on our beautiful listeners and uh, <coughs> with some of these people. So Mandar, you crack me up, has been saying... Uh, he will hit the share button on this on this sunny side. You see, Mando says the funniest stuff. All right, Leo, artists are vessels. Yes, they are, my love. Now, I know, I thought I saw Lynn Porter's genius has checked in. Yes, we love Jody and John. And wasn't that a wonderful time in Tony and Tina history? It really was. Lynn, that's when you came on to the show, very uh, around the Jody and John era, right? Lee Mazzilli, all that stuff. Um, I thought I saw, let me see, Rena. Did I see oh, Rena Crignali? Rena Crignali Berge. I thought I saw my cousin from Massachusetts. Andrew Holmes. Yes, my sweet friend, Andrew Holmes. How are you, honey? You know Ed Sylvia. Who doesn't know Ed Sylvia and who doesn't love Ed Sylvia? Order a mask. I'm telling you, just go to his website. You're going to be enchanted with his designs. They're just beautiful. It's beautiful stuff. Uh, Rena, a mask that reads what? You know what, Rena? I, I'm telling you, I've been thinking about some special What's the Story with Maria Mass. I've been thinking about it. It's something on the, I mean, if this thing keeps going, because I know a lot of places are doing that. Well, let's talk about our merchandise. What do we have for merchandise, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you, Rena, for the segue. Um, okay, so, of course, we have the classic What's the Story with Maria mug, right? And on the back it says, go ahead, keep eating. This is 10 bucks for the mug. Now, if you order the mug, it's 10 bucks. The only thing with the mug is it's a little heavy, so there's a little more in the shipping. It cost me, believe it or not, about five bucks to ship. Maybe, yeah, around five. So that's the only thing with the cup. But these things are super light. So that's 10 bucks, but well worth it. And then also 10 bucks. Look at this, this little bag, our tote bag, which is washable and these days we're trying not to use plastic. What's the story with Maria on the back? Go ahead, keep eating. That's 10 bucks, super light to ship. And then the piece of the resistance. Go ahead, keep eating. Our blue apron, blue is the color of 2020. And we're going with blue. 
Blue is my color. Go ahead, keep eating right there. That's 25. Well worth it because it's extra, it's really nice. It's very good material that's gonna last you a long time. Super cheap to um, ship. So those, that's our stuff, right? All right, so let's keep checking on our beautiful people. I'm so happy you folks come back every week. Oh, there's my honey. Hi, honey. Eudenia Mesa has joined us. She is across the Hudson as we speak. Um, thank you, Leo. Leo has posted my website. Thank you. Now, on my website, which is mariagentilly.com, you can also get all my stuff. You can get my CDs. You can download, uh, you download the songs or actual actually order physical CDs, and you can get all the What's the Story with Maria stuff. Also, I sell Rodan Feel Skin Care. I'm still doing that, and it's wonderful, and I love it. And you can order that. That will connect you right to it. So anything you need from me, you can go right to my website, mariagentilly.com. Um, so let me see. We have we've got a couple minutes left to our show. I'm just scrolling to see who else has checked in. Our regulars have checked in. Let's remind everybody of John, John Walter's beautiful stuff. This is my favorite one of his. Now it's hard because you got the lights there reflecting, but I just love this painting. I miss you even when I'm with you. Look at how beautiful that is. So that's one of John Walter's serious and sweet ones. But some of these are so funny. I can't wait for Dominic Cooper to see this because the Sunny and Cher one that says today's weather, Sunny and Cher, it's hysterical. And they're all 11 by 13, I think he said. But there's so many. There were so many. Like, there's one that I love that has a girl looking up at the moon, and it says, the moon with a side of fries. It's just, like, so cool. And I'm a big fan of, like, galaxy stuff and moon. And, and so I'm going to go back to John's site and look, and I'm going to order something else because I'm just in love with his stuff. And also because I know John and I know how smart he is and how... And just like such an amazing guy, I, I want that energy in my apartment. I'm a big believer in energy and art. Like when you make something, you whatever it is, you a physical piece, your energy is in that piece. So John's energy is so good that having a piece of, of his creativity in my apartment made me creative. I started doing more things. Lynn and I have been writing some stuff. Lynn's been writing so much stuff of her own. I've been writing some stuff of my own. Um, a lot of us have been really creative. Chris uh, DePiro, oh my God, is doing amazing things. Just have stepped it up such a level uh, for Gavon's Produce. So there's a lot of uh, our friends have, look, we're in a pandemic. We know that. We're in the strangest, spookiest time of my life that I remember. But it's a time for us as artists and uh, just creative people. Whether you are someone that loves to cook, maybe you're a baker, you're someone that you know works every day, but you know when you come home you like to cook or, or plant a garden. You know, like my cousin Ron Berge, Rena's husband is an amazing gardener, and like he just creates these beautiful landscapes. Like people like that, I, I love so much. You like use your creativity in life. You know, don't stifle it. And now that we're in this crazy time, is a good time to say rather than be stressed out and stay in that place of paranoia or fear of the future. Let's just swim in the creative. Let's let's let go and swim in that creative space because the stress is going to be there. It's going to be there no matter what, and we're going to have to adjust to whatever we're doing. So let's let our higher power take care of the stress and swim in the creative and be in that creative space, you know, and help each other out. I want to thank my buddy Leo Rodriguez for helping me week after week. By the way, Leo makes those amazing videos that you see those little um promo videos if you anybody is looking to hire leo to do your website to do your promos to create stuff leo is your guy he does really amazing work he put together a video for me and lynn with um art the song that we wrote hiding in a ghost town which is about the pandemic in new york so uh we wrote a song called hiding in a ghost town and i took a ton of pictures and i sent them to leo and he arranged them in such a beautiful way and made a video so Leo's great at all that stuff. One minute. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Okay, I want to thank Jim Bell. He's our producer and engineer. He's amazing. I want to thank Joe Rocks. Uh, he it, it told me I should do a show on Arms Radio, and I will forever be grateful to him. So thank you, Arms Radio. Thank you, Jim Bell. Thank you, Joe Rocks. Thank you, Leo Rodriguez. John Walter. Edward Sylvia. I love you guys. Stay creative. And just know that we're all in this together. 
like it or not. See you next week. Who I am, who I am, who I am.